Hello, welcome back to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Thank you once again to everyone who's out there reading the podcast. It's making a huge difference. Don't forget, if you have an idea for Dad's Bedtime Stories, just write to us at dad.bedtimestories at gmail.com. The link should be in the description. And now, on to the show. This is episode 65, The Martian Invasion. This is part of the Moonbase series. If you haven't done so already, I'd probably go back and start with one of the earlier Moonbase series before you listen to this one. But if you recall from last time, we were building a moon base on the moon along with some spaceships. And for some reason, giant robots and strange spaceships that shoot candy out of them um, came to attack you a few times and we're not really sure why. Just lay back in your bed, close your eyes, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up aboard spaceship once again. You get up and stretch. You look around and you decide to leave the bedroom area. You walk out to the main part of spaceship and you look around. Hmm, what were we doing again? Oh yeah, the moon base. You run over to the window to see how the moon base is doing. And it looks... finished. The entire outside has been built. All of the lights are on. But there's still robots flying back and forth, finishing some things up. And putting the moon rock on top of it to disguise it as part of the moon. We don't need Elon Musk sneaking up here and finding this moon base. Is it finished, you ask Spaceship? The moon base is 99% complete. Alert, 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 says Spaceship. What, what, what's going on, Spaceship? I am detecting an army of spacecrafts in the distance near Mars. There are 100 ships and 10 giant robots, explains the ship. That's a lot of spaceships. Do you think they're coming here? Their current destination is right here, says Spaceship. How long until they get here, you ask? I have calculated that we have one day before they arrive. That's good, but why so long? It seems that not all of these ships are equipped with hyperdrives, explains the ship. They travel quickly, but much slower than we can. Well, that gives us time to plan. (sighs) Did you build those spaceships we were talking about having on the moon base? You ask. Yes, spaceships are complete. We have 20 ships available, says the spaceship. 20 ships? But how are we going to fly them? You will need to find pilots. We need to get on this right away, spaceship. Let's get going. You jump in the command seat. You press a couple of the dials, and spaceship begins to glow. It changes shape until it's the normal spaceship size once again, without the huge cargo area at the back for all the 3D printers. You point the ship towards Earth and press forward on the throttle. You quickly pass through the atmosphere, then dive down below the clouds. You fly over trees and hills, streets and homes and cities, until you arrive back in your neighborhood. When you get there, you head straight to the school. Spaceship, Transform into a school bus, you say. Understood, 
spaceship starts to glow. It grows and grows and transforms into the shape of a school bus. And not only that, it creates a hologram of a bus driver, which makes it look like there's actually an adult driving the bus. Okay, spaceship, drive to the school. The spaceship, currently in the form of a bus, drives along the road and turns into the school. The door opens and you run out. You run straight through the doors of the school and then you head directly to your classroom. You burst through the door of your classroom and everybody stops talking. The classroom is entirely full. All of your classmates are there, as well as somebody who you don't really... Wait a second. You were there too. You forgot that Spaceship probably created a robot copy of you to go to school for you. And then you remembered that the robot copies are programmed to explode and turn to goo as soon as you're in the same room as each other. It's a defense mechanism to make sure that people don't see two of you in the same place. When your robot copy sees you, it suddenly starts to spurt and sputter and spark. Then, smoke shoots out of it, and it turns into goo and melts to the ground. Everybody looks at the spot where the robot copy of you used to be, and then they look back at you. Uh, I can explain, you say. So listen, I, uh, well, how do I say this? You try to think of a way to explain to your friends that you have a magic spaceship and uh, you need help defending a moon base that you're building from some sort of unknown army of ships and robots from Mars. How do you explain this, you think? Then you come up with an idea. Everybody... Um, we have a surprise field trip today that my parents, uh, paid for. Well, there's a bus outside right now. Come on, everyone, follow me. You run out of the classroom straight for the bus, looking so confident that none of the kids question you. All of the kids in the classroom run after you and head straight for the school bus. They all climb inside and the teacher starts running after them. Kids! Wait, kids! It's... You're not supposed to... We don't have permission forms signed. You can't go on that bus. Get off here right now, she says as she approaches the bus. But the bus driver closes the bus door and then slams on the gas. The bus suddenly shoots forward really quickly and everybody falls down into their seats. It speeds around the corner and out of the school. Then, when it's far enough away, you say, Spaceship, do your thing. Spaceship suddenly jumps up into the air and starts glowing and growing. The spaceship starts to grow and grow and grow. It transforms back into a huge version of the spaceship. Only this time, everything's a little bit bigger. The living room has multiple couches for everyone to sit at. So does the kitchen. And instead of one bedroom, there's like 25 bedrooms. Wow. Your classmates begin to look scared and a little confused. Don't worry, everyone. I just didn't think you'd believe me if I told you the truth in the first place. Well, part of it'll probably help if you just watch. The spaceship flies up through the clouds, but it keeps on going and going and going 
until it passes through the atmosphere and back out into space. It starts heading directly for the moon, and your classmates stare out the windows in wonder. Well, as you can see, you say, I kind of have this magic spaceship here, and I need your help because there's a group of possibly bad spaceships coming this way, and I think it might be for a space battle. Your classmates still look very confused and unsure. Then you explain further. I made a group of fighter ships, but I need people to pilot them. Still looking confused, you grab a box full of spacesuit watches and you begin to walk around and hand them out to your friends. Here you go, everyone. Put on the watch and press the button on the outside of it. Your friends still look a little skeptical, but they strap on the watches, and one by one they press the buttons on them, and one by one, spacesuits that look like armor fold out around their bodies. They look down at their hands and their feet. They're starting to seem a little more convinced. Now, all you have to do to use the spacesuits is to think about what you want to do. Like, if you want to fly, just think about flying. Imagine yourself floating in the air. Watch me, you say. You press the button on your watch and your spacesuit folds out around your body. Then, you just think about hovering a little bit up in the air, and blasters shoot out of the bottom of your feet and your hands, and you gently float up in the air. See? You say? One by one, your friends try the same thing, until everyone is floating just above the ground. You let go of the thought of flying, and you jump back down to the ground, and one by one your friends do the same. You go back to the viewing screen, and you can see that you're approaching the moon base now. Um, one of your friends says, Can I ask a question? Uh, like, if, uh, we're gonna be fighter pilots like you say will we have to like destroy other things i don't think i want to destroy an enemy spaceship says the kid do not worry says spaceship all ships are equipped with emp cannons they should allow you to shut down enemy ships by sending a concentrated electromagnetic pulse at the ship. Uh, what was that? Says the kid. Oh, don't worry about it. That's just my spaceship. And he's right. They all have that. So all they'll do is shut down the other ships. No need to worry about excessive violence here. You explain. The spaceship approaches the huge moon base, and a gigantic door on the front of the base opens up. Spaceship flies right inside. On every side of you, the left, the right, and directly in front of you, the bay of the moon base is lined with really sleek looking fighter jets or space fighters or something like that. The other kids look around and gasp. The spaceship lands and the back hatch opens. You lead the other students out of the ship and over to the little spaceships. Everybody jump in. Uh... I don't know how to fly a ship, says one of the kids. It's really easy. Don't worry about it. Each ship has a basic artificial intelligence that helps you fly it. You really just have to steer where you want to go and 
decide how fast. Then there's sort of a targeting system on the front view screen that you can use to aim at different ships. Let's go practice on asteroids, you say. We only have until tomorrow to learn how to use these things. Each of your classmates jump into one of the ships. You pick one as well. You climb on top, and you see a sort of glass hatch on the top of the ship. You press a button beside it and the hatch opens up. There's only a single seat in this spaceship. You climb into the seat and sit down. You press another button and the glass hatch closes. The ship powers up and starts to hover just above the ground automatically. There's a control stick in front of you and a lever on the right that you're pretty sure controls the speed. You gently press forward on the lever on the right and the ship starts to move forward. You push the stick to the right and it turns to the right. You head straight out the hatch that the other spaceship came in. One by one, your friends figure out how to turn their ships on and they each fly them out the hangar bay. Then, you lead your friends straight towards a group of asteroids that you know are in the area. When you get towards the asteroids, you each practice shooting your EMP cannon at the asteroid. Nothing happens when they hit asteroids, but when they hit ships, they should be able to shut them down. You practice swerving left and right to avoid the different asteroids as they follow you. And then you try to aim at one of them. Another asteroid is about to hit you from the side. So you turn the ship quickly right on its side and pass by the asteroid. You lock your sights on the other asteroid that you decided to target, and you fire. A blue circle of light shoots out the front of the ship and hits the asteroid directly. Well, I think I've got the hang of this thing, you say. You and your friends play around in the asteroid field for a while, flying your ship up and down and over and around them until you actually start to get a little bit sleepy. You know what? I think we better get well rested before tomorrow, you say. Let's get back to the moon base. You lead your friends back to the moon base, and one by one you land your ships in the hangar. You climb out of your ship and climb down a ladder on the side of it. Then you say to your friends, let's go figure out where we're all sleeping. You walk out of the giant hangar and you enter a hallway. A spaceship? Where do we go? Just follow the arrows. Green arrows appear on the floor of the moon base and you and your friends follow them. It leads you to a set of rooms each one with its own door. Each room has the name of your friend on it. Well, good night, everyone. Wait, says one of your friends. What? Aren't our parents going to wonder where we are? They ask. Oh, don't worry about that, you say. I had spaceship scan all of you earlier on and create robot clones of you. They'll go to school and then to home and act just like you. You can even download their memories at the end if you want to. Uh, okay, says your friend. All of your friends open the doors to their rooms and go inside. Uh, where's my bedroom, you ask? This way, says Spaceship. You follow the green lines once again and they lead you right to a gigantic door, much bigger than the others. 
you press a button on the side and the door opens up. Inside is an absolutely gigantic room. It has everything in it that your spaceship has. Its own kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, playroom, living room, game room, and of course, its own little bedroom as well. You look around for a little while, but you decide you're too tired right now. You head to the bedroom and you climb right into the bed. Your eyes are starting to feel heavy, so you just let them close. Then you pay attention to anywhere you might be holding tension. First your shoulders, then your stomach and your chest, your legs, your arms. Just let all the tension go and let yourself sink down deeper and deeper into your bed. No need to do anything. Just notice how comfortable it is and allow yourself to relax. Relax.